Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Tyler Crates YouTube channel. I hope y'all ha are having a blessed day. My name is Tyler. Yet again, I have found myself in a very spur of the moment purchase. I gotta wait while this uh, jet takes off. Great intro. Alrighty, everybody. Well, it is a beautiful day. Uh, we've had quite a bit of rain. Uh, I did have a video filming uh, I was filming a video of some free lawnmowers I got, and uh, that video just kind of fell apart. If you want to see that video, drop a comment down in the comment section. Um, there are actually some free uh, lawnmowers I got, some rear engine riders, so the engine's behind you and they got one big blade. Uh, I haven't sold one of them yet, and I'll show you. It's a Toro 1132 Professional Rear Engine Rider, but that is not the gist of this video. I had hoped to be doing a camping video by now, but it just hasn't happened yet. I, uh... I'm now the owner of a very unsuspecting purchase the guy I bought these from. Really awesome uh, guy, super cool to talk to, had a plethora of knowledge. Uh, he's a real nice guy, but he was selling these. Uh, didn't I'm assuming you just didn't want to work on them, didn't have the time, something. Um, but I am now the owner of a 1991 Toro Wheel Horse Classic, uh, also known as a Toro 310-8. I thought it was a 318-8, but it's a 310. I think this, I, I looked this up via the part number, so I'm pretty sure this is a 91. Uh, this has a Kohler Magnum 10, and these mowers are, or these, this is a real garden tractor. I got this here for uh, 85, or uh, 50 bucks. Uh, it's in rough shape, but uh, we should be able to get it going. And uh, apparently, unbeknownst to me, I got a Craftsman 2, a 1985 Craftsman 2. That is a super rare Craftsman lawnmower. Uh, I believe new in 1985. This was $1,500. Uh, I believe, according to the brochure, there's like four pictures of these things online. So, kind of in uncharted territory with this. It is a rear shoot lawnmower. So, it exits via in between the tires underneath the transmission. That's where the shoot is for the grass. Uh, the blades spin like this, not like this. So uh, this, I believe, is actually a really rare lawnmower. Uh, I don't know how many of these craftsmen made. There's very, very limited knowledge of them online. Most of them do not have this slanted look. Uh, I saw a picture of these in a brochure, I believe, and there's this one, and then there's a normal one that has a flat deck. Uh, this is a Craftsman 2. This was made by Murray, uh, I do believe, uh, from what I was able to read on the one forum that had info on this. I think it was one forum. Don't mind the rooster in the background. Just crows like nonstop. Just repeating, repeated crowing. Um, this has a seized engine. Uh, I guess previous owners ran it low on oil and just seized it. Came with a new engine. 35 bucks, 50 bucks, 85 for the pair. It's going to be a lot of work, like a lot of work. So um, hopefully this video does well. Drop a like, helps me out a lot, and comment. If you got any info on either of these, um, I do live out west. This came from, uh, I believe it's got a, uh, uh, I'll show you in the back. It's got a equipment sticker from uh, Illinois. So this wheel horse has come from, it's come a long ways out to the west coast. Today this lawnmower would cost $4,300, so um, that's quite a bit of money. Uh, I guess in 85, so 1500 bucks in 85. I'm sure that was not cheap. I don't know how much the wheel horse would cost. Wheel horse stuff, a absolute plethora of knowledge on these things. Well documented, I think. Uh, I haven't really done a whole lot of research on it, but I'm now the proud owner of a wheel horse, so that makes a Craftsman GT6000, the dark gray version, a 1980s Murray Garden Tractor, a GT18 to be exact, which is also quite rare uh, with no deck. That mower just needs a battery and it runs. Um, and now a 91 wheel horse and a weird craftsman two thing if you see a cut on my lip i was shaving and got myself 
Just figured I'd throw that out there so people weren't wondering. Just point it out now, okay? And when I smile, it tends to, you know, get angry, but ignore it. That's not the point of the video. First, I figured, so first I figured I'd show y'all the, uh, one of the rear engine riders I got. Toro 1132 Professional rear engine mower with a 30 inch deck. Um, starter exploded on it. It does have a pull cord. Uh, I was filming a video on this and just, I don't know, wasn't really feeling, wasn't really feeling it filming these, but, um, got a new pull cord on it, got another carburetor for it. Uh, the switch kind of wasn't working, had the wrong spark plug, completely wrong spark plug. Wasn't even listed in the cross-reference for the original spark plug, but, um... Along with this, I also got a Green Craftsman rear engine rider that I had to do some work to. Uh, I did end up selling that pretty quickly. Uh, got it running, got everything good to go on it, and it worked great and didn't have any issues. Quite what I'm doing with that, but yeah. The gist of the video. A wheel horse. Um, I never thought I'd own a wheel horse, and I honestly didn't know that wheel horses were Toro brand. I thought they were wheel horse brand, but that goes to show what you know until you tell you don't know or know or whatever um this is a side exit thing kind of tired uh this thing's a beast it's like for real we're talking like heavy duty cast axle cast pedals apparently they felt the need to do that uh the deck's kind of trash down there it's gonna need to get straightened up on this side as well it's pretty bent uh this thing's definitely had its fair share of issues. Like I was saying, it's got a Kohler Magnum 10. Ran on carb spray, or ran on uh, um, carb cleaner. Um, these got nipped off. It's got some rust. Nothing that a pressure washer won't solve. Um, if I wanted to, I could, I suppose, spray paint it. Uh, I don't really like doing that kind of stuff unless I'm gonna really dig into it, um, but it could definitely use some spray paint. I'll for sure be hitting it with a pressure washer and a wire brush. Um, at the very least, y'all, if you got rusty stuff, get the loose paint off. That loose paint holds water and accelerates the rust, and you mix grass yuck in there, and recipe for disaster, so, uh, and battery acid. In that case, that's where the battery goes on this, apparently. Uh, this did not have a battery. This did have a battery. Condition is unknown. I have it on the trickle charger, and the trickle charger supposedly says that it's charged but uh yeah a craftsman 2 12 speed 40 inch deck rear discharge so there's no discharge on this side and there's no discharge on this side the discharge is right there under the transmission uh this did have some damage here i don't know if something fell across that uh and it's got a Got a cracked headlight lens, but um, this is in immaculate shape. Really, the only rust you got is kind of here, and I'm really glad it's missing the uh, foot pad. Super glad, because foot pads, they hold that water right there and just absolutely destroy those steps. Uh, and it's got some under here. Um, I guess probably from the battery, if I had to guess. It's quite the uh, interesting unit. It has a Craftsman branded Tecumseh um, that is seized. Uh, I do have a spare motor, like I said. Um, but, I mean, you got headlight buckets aren't rusted. There's no rust along the seams where these like to rust if they sit out or hold water. 502-254-262. Uh, I don't know. There's another variation of this, which... The one online that I saw had a hole here. I don't know if it was factory for the gas tank. And it also has like a PTO thing, I'm pretty sure. Um, but, I mean, what a cool like design. It is such a sweet mower. Like, look at that. That thing is so rad. It's such a cool design. Um, I did see a catalog where there was this one. There was a rear engine rider of one of these and then there was the like big craftsman um the like garden tractor variant for this era which are very sought after the gt6000 or the um they're sears branded craftsman too as well but um yeah really hard to find these online 
Yeah, so uh, this thing came out of West Chicago, Illinois. Um, came from some lawn equipment incorporated. There's the uh, beefy, beefy rear end. Uh, I, I know these things have all kinds of attachments, but out west, people love to scrap stuff because they just don't care at all. So this thing, thankfully, thankfully did not get scrapped. Holy smokes. Saved one from the scrapper, saved two from the scrapper. Um, so I'm going to be starting with the wheel horse here, and the reason is is I don't want to have to be doing an engine swap right off the bat with the Craftsman. I'd have to do an engine swap off the bat, so without further ado, I'm going to go get the battery. We'll get it hooked up. i got to make up some new uh, ends here because I guess someone needed the ends. I don't know, but um, yeah, let's get to it. Alrighty, y'all, the first thing we're going to be doing, and I do this now whenever I get garden tractors or tractors or lawn mowers in general. Actually, when I get anything in general, I'm washing them down. I do not want to work on rusty, dirty stuff. Uh, and water does kind of help get down in some threads sometimes. And well, it just makes it a much more pleasant experience cleaning them. So uh, I'm gonna let this uh, hose bleed off. Someone did paint these tires gray. Apparently they were originally a cream white. So I think they would look a lot better in that color too, but um, Alrighty, y'all, I just realized that I believe this thing is missing a shroud that goes over the head. So I'll probably have to make a shroud, which shouldn't be too hard, actually. I got material to make a shroud, no problem. But uh, yeah, I just kind of noticed that just now. Um, I'm gonna spray some more cleaner. Alrighty, everybody, I turned the camera off and just went ahead and cleaned this up. Any wheel horse guys watch this? Um, oh, there's a hair on my finger. Get off, buddy. Um, are those supposed to be cream white or are they supposed to be spray painted gray? <laughs> um, if they're not supposed to be gray, I don't know how I'm going to get that off. I could use like paint stripper, but then am I stripping the paint underneath? I don't know. 
code for y'all. So. Sticker kind of started to come off, but this deck is just trash. Someone bent that pulley. You can see it's bent back there. It's like crushed. Um, this thing, for being a uh, mower deck, it got pretty thrashed. Alrighty, so I pressure washed under here best I could. Um, got it relatively clean. There's, it's gonna need another round. These almost always do need another round of cleaning, but uh, I want a washer. Of course, it's dirty. You got the air filter wet. It's got a nut on it. It's not surprising. Well, that was a lot easier than usually I can just tap on it and it comes off. Hmm, not that bad, honestly. Floats free. Ooh, that's not great. That jet in there is a little off. This needle's like an extra long guy with a inset. Well, it's soft. Had some paint on it or something. What the? There's like silver coming off. I got a little uh, welder tip cleaning kit here, and I'm just gonna take this one. I think I got smaller ones if this is too large. And I'm gonna go down the center of this jet thing it's actually i believe it's an emulsion tube Alrighty everybody, I just probably spent the last hour and a half to two hours building this sweet makeshift shield out of a piece of uh, shelving. So uh, I cut this for the spark plug and this deal here. Uh, I did have to pull out a, uh, I think this is a head stud, pretty sure. So. Go ahead, I don't know what this little bracket goes to, but um, hopefully that, well, I mean, hopefully it should contain the air a whole lot more and also help to cool the exhaust off. It's got an exit here. Well, basically the whole area is kind of an exit. We'll have to see if it gets hot or not. If it gets hot, I'll obviously come up with something different. The uh, spark plug did not look too great. Uh, I have it right here. This thing does spin over. I'm just gonna... Get it relatively tight. Here's the spark plug. Looking rather corrody. It does spin over though. So what am I gonna do? Clean it off and put it back in there, buddy. It's as good as I can do, really. Let's go get the uh, battery and uh, throw it in this thing, see what happens. I don't remember what the oil looks like. Tell you the truth. I don't know, where's paper towel? What is going on? What is this special? Please? So it's low. I got some oil I can throw in it. Okay, so let's see if this thing will turn over here.
Okay. I got nothing. Do I need to be sitting in the seat of this thing or something? Alright, everybody, so I took the key out, the switch. It's basically junk, but I scrubbed it down with a wire brush and got it to work and sprayed some electrical cleaner, but uh, I bumped it just barely. It wasn't even enough for it to turn over, and uh, it is now working. So I guess we'll uh, see how this thing sounds. You know what I did kind of want to do was... I wanted to spray some uh, tri-flow <clears throat> on the starter. Here we go. Wow, this is a really big motor. It's so big, it's making it Alrighty everybody, I guess there ain't nothing to it but to see if this thing's gonna fire up or not fire up. I don't know. Okay, we'll give it a break. There was fuel that just came, I watched it come right through here. Alright everybody, it's getting late um, before I pack it up because I got a ton of stuff to clean up. I want to take this thing for a ride. I don't know if the rear end has fluid in it or not. Um, I got the air filter on. Okay, I have no clue of the condition of anything else. So far the motor is in like immaculate condition somehow. I also haven't oiled the clutch and the brake is getting stuck. Um, and this thing's extremely hard to steer. Let's see here. Okay, low range, low, uh, first. Oh, that's reverse, or I need to go into reverse. Oh, it doesn't take reverse very good.
that's that's a little too low. Alrighty, everybody, it is late, late in the day, the next day. It has been pouring rain. When I tell you raining, I can't do anything. It was also windy. Normally, I could have this tarp out and be working under it, and then the combine motor and stuff's under here, um, but I just haven't been able to do that because the wind gets it and just absolutely will rip it off. So, um, I've just been kind of waiting for a break in the weather, and it's cold, cold, it's like 40s Fahrenheit low probably mid 40s low 40s fahrenheit well it's probably mid 40s fahrenheit maybe uh high 40s um but i want to do a couple things and i did a couple things here off camera that was just some real minor stuff but let's talk about it one thing i did so one thing i did the steering wheel when those were straight this thing was sideways so I fixed that. The steering on this is really tight. The way I was able to fix that is you take these two bolts out and that one out there and you lift up. This keeps this pinned against the steering gear down there. It's all cast and nice. So I carefully pulled it out, made sure the tires were exactly where I wanted them, pulled it out and reorientated the gear down in there. Let's see if I can get it reorientated the gear so it now is let's see if I can get it to focus on it there we go so I reorientated it so now it is in line that end is a uh, machine circle that just slides in a receiving uh, socket type deal um, fix the headlight these tabs have been bent up so I just took that off, bent those tabs down, stuck that back in there. It was rattling really bad and it was sideways. Uh, what else did I do? Taped the seat up best I could with Gorilla Tape. Okay, let's see if these take grease. Listen here, buddy, I need a paper towel. Left my paper towels out in the rain and, well, you know. They got to soaked. Will it stay on there and actually work? Oh yeah. Oh. Ooh, very hard to push. I'm gonna come through and wipe that out. Oh, that is bad. Stuff I'm putting in is like forest green. So I'd say that's probably not supposed to look like that. I'm gonna stop there. So far easy. And we're getting hard all of a sudden. Oh, we're getting way. Oh, starting to leak out around this thing. I'm gonna pull it back so it's more of a straight shot. Oh, we're locked up. Release. Hmm. I don't know about that one, y'all. I could really try pushing. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Look, starting to come out. Holy smokes. That's bad. For it to be like that, we're going to get this one a little more juice on it. I'm going to actually push really hard to get that to work. So far nothing's coming out. One full pump. Two full pumps. Okay. Got stuff coming out. If y'all didn't fall. Four. We'll just do four because that's a lot of grease I'm putting in there. 
Please tell me the grease circle on this side is facing out. Yes. Thank you, whoever did this before me. Come on. Okay. I'm gonna get that on there. Rotate it. One, two, three. Four. Okay, that's quite a bit. For now, that's good. Alrighty, so it's 15 sixteenths. I can't get it off because it's stuck, so I get to pull the deck off. This thing has an attachomatic, no tools needed. We're gonna see if that's a true statement or not. Great focus camera. Come on, Whip. lift up. So, what do I do? Just, um, what do I need to? lift up with my foot and here well what are we hitting on oh oh well that's genius somebody knew what they were doing believe it or not now what what do you do that on the other side or what how do you get this thing off well it's chained up over here how do you get the chain off i need tools to get the chain off i wonder if i Alrighty, got this thing off. I guess apparently you do have to have a wrench to take it off. I don't know what the deal is with the chain. Um, but yeah, I'd say there's no belt going through that. So let me fix this thing, get it opened back up and put it back on. And well, before it gets dark here, I'll see if the deck does anything. It is the next day. Didn't get a chance to run this thing probably for better uh this thing is in terrible terrible shape um i don't know what's going on here but you know kind of that's you know no no big deal right um so we're gonna need to fix that weld this back down um i'm gonna re i'm gonna weld some more on this thing i don't know if that's factory probably not um and then I gotta weld a plate over these. Uh, I need to <clears throat> unbend this mess here. And I think I'm gonna reinforce this with a piece of metal on the inside. That idler stuck, this one doesn't sound great. Uh, I don't think I can grease those. This deck has just been absolutely beat. Um, so we're gonna see if I can salvage this, but uh, yeah. Hopefully I'll be able to salvage it. Alrighty everybody, a uh, little dilemma our other gas welders put away. If you remember correctly in that lot of stuff I bought many videos ago, I got a Lincoln Buzzbox or a Tombstone welder. Don't mind the tarp flailing around, it's just up here going absolutely crazy. It's like been raining and now it's like nice blue sky. <laughs> um, but I've never used, I've never stick welded. I've never stick welded, stick weld. I've never done stick welding, and um, figure what better time to try than now. Hopefully this this thing works. I have no clue. Um, here it is. It's uh, been here for quite some time. It's uh, just DC, I believe. Uh, I don't know what year or any of that this thing is. I don't know if it works. I don't know if it's going to catch on fire and explode. I on I just have no clue. I have some random welding rod that is that okay all right everybody i had my dad do it he jumped it up to 120 and i was tapping and getting stuck and that's why i got that one glowing red hot and had to stop and cut it off <laughs> oh, uh, oh and then my dad dropped one that was burned through and i was standing on it and it melted into my boot <laughs> so uh I don't know what happened, but now we're back down to 75. It was glowing red when he was welding at 120, the whole rod was, so now I'm gonna, it definitely looks like stainless. I'm gonna try to weld this one spot here. The difference is you're scratching now. You can come over here. You, but you're, you're not sticking it. You're oh, I'm not start. sticking it. I'm not Scratch start is what jabbing him. You gotta drag it. <laughs> I'm dying. 
died over here. Dang, why did it do that? I let go of it. I don't understand. I'm dragging it. Hey, you gotta get it started. You just just wobble that back and forth and get it off. Oh, it's hot. Oh, you like that thing's no good. <laughs> Throw that sucker away. Dang, I keep doing that. Maybe me. you could finish that one off. Did it crack? I don't know. I got my finger hot. Did mine? Is it not clean enough? Is that good or? I, don't I can't tell. It looked like it's dirty. I think it's up here more and not there. Maybe you could run another pass down on the base. And in terms of welding in general and stick welding, I've literally spent like 45 minutes stick welding. Um, so these welds aren't great. They're on a super rusty deck. Um, just kind of a recipe for disaster. Don't really know what I'm doing. Welding stainless steel rod on a rusty deck. It, they're okay. I, they're not wonderful. They're pretty, pretty. I think they're contaminated. They're kind of cold, and the buzz box set on it to run uh, 60 amps, uh, and I ended up doing 75, and I could almost have done 90. It just doesn't seem like it's really penetrating the metal. It seems like it's just kind of floating around on top. Um, but listen, there it is. Judge me. No, don't judge me. Uh, this one, the whole reason it looks like this is I was trying to get it to flow out and it started becoming really watery and it was like dripping off and it wouldn't penetrate. Normally with like a, I think it's MIG, what I normally use, gas shielded. Um, I'm used to it like melting this metal along with that. When I was welding this, it was just kind of melting on the surface. So I don't know. Um, did that end, did through there. Obviously this is super dirty. Oh, let me see here. So I don't know what this thing's for if someone put this on here afterwards, but I think it's supposed to be like, I don't quite know what it does. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm done for the night. I'm tired. Uh, these welding cables are trashed. I don't know how many rods I use. You can see that one burned through. Obviously I'm, I'm not like unhappy about the experience. I don't know really what I'm doing. I need to honestly watch some videos and uh, I know in welding in general preps everything and obviously this deck is not prepped really. It would need to be, uh, my dad made a good point which shot to my dad for helping me. Um, he turned it up to 120, welded with it and got the, the rod red hot and then turned it back down, it worked fine. But, uh, where was I going with this? Oh, he was talking about getting a needle scaler. I think we may have one, but um, really this deck should have got sandblasted or something. That thing has not worked great. It stalls out pretty easy, but um, yeah, you know what's funny is now that I welded this, it moved. Like this thing used to be straight and now it's like ram, ram. <laughs> uh, but at some point we gotta fix these two holes here. Alrighty everybody, it is the next day. I was gonna use the old wheel horse here to do some work, but I figured I should check the rear end fluid first, um, cause I saw a post online about it. Glad I did, glad I only drove this thing around a little bit with what was in it because it's like white. It's not milkshake, it's like white colored, like milk. Um, it's really bad. So uh, I need to drain that and I guess probably gonna run some diesel or some gasoline through it. Um, I saw online diesel, but I don't know if I, I don't think I have any diesel. I'll have to look and see. Uh, and then I have to go and get some more 80, 90 weight because I only have a little bit. Uh, and then we will uh, hopefully be able to like use this thing. Uh, I'm gonna come back and work on the deck. Did some research on that welding rod, that E309 welding rod. Apparently it's pretty hard to use right off the bat. So I was kind of at a disadvantage using that as my first time uh, welding, but I'll just shine those welds up with a grinder, make them a little less ugly. And uh, I gotta fix some more spots on that deck. And then the deck will be going back on. It does have one froze idler. I'm gonna use the idlers until they like 
blow up or I decide to replace them, you know, idlers are pretty cheap. They're like 12, 15 bucks an idler. So uh, let's get to this rear end here. I wasn't filming that entire time. I thought I was filming. Um, it's draining out. That's, yeah. This is supposed to take 80, 90 weight. And uh, I don't know if that's even 80, 90 weight without the water in it. Look at how thick it is. <laughs> um, if you can see it here, that's uh, not what it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to be like nice gear oil. So I gotta figure out whether or not I'm gonna run some diesel or gasoline in this. I gotta look it up. Uh, obviously when you do that, you don't wanna be hard on the transmission. It's just to clean it out or the rear end. It's just to clean it out um, because diesel and gasoline have luber or, uh, cleaning properties. So I have some 8090, but I'm gonna have to go get more. Um, this fuel line was also leaking. It was that clear stuff that was like hard as a rock and it had cracked and was dripping everywhere. So I replaced it with some uh, um, rubber line. I'm just gonna let this drain out. Supposedly it's two quarts, but uh, on this welding here, um, the guy I watched online was doing an uphill pass. Uh, it was a good video, but he was saying to spend time on each side of the weld and you don't wanna spend time in the middle because I guess this stuff runs real easy. Um, this thing is so booger welded. I'm gonna have to come back through here with a grinding wheel here uh, this afternoon and clean all my welds up. Uh, and then we'll try welding. I gotta weld this hole here and I also gotta cut a piece to weld that. Uh, I think the second time around, I'm gonna really focus on being clean with this. Um, and we'll go from there. So uh, yeah, this was not how I wanted this to turn out, but it was my first time. Basically set myself up for failure. Apparently that welding rod was, I think I said that before, really hard to use as is. So I'll be cleaning that up with a die grinder thingy. Uh, yeah, but our focus right now is this because I want to use this thing this morning to haul a trailer around and clean the chicken coop out. So um, just waiting. Alrighty y'all, got that majority filled up. It might be like half a quart low, but it's in between the lines. It's up on the upper side of in between the lines. Uh, went ahead and welded this up. A Little bit better at the welding, not super great. These were patching holes in, so they were actually kind of difficult. Uh, I welded there, and over there, and uh, I had to patch that hole, which I didn't quite get all the way, and then I put that plate in. So, um, don't judge me, please. <laughs> please be easy on me. Um, oh, it did penetrate, that's good. So, um, I may have to come back through on this side and weld that and beat this flat and maybe weld it, but I'm done messing with the deck right now. I gotta do chicken coop stuff. Uh, the deck will wait tomorrow because I also gotta take the blades off and sharpen them. So, uh, yeah, I figured I'd just pop in here and show that real quick. It's been a couple hours since I recorded, so. This thing is good to go, uh, SA8090 in it, and yeah, actually probably about two quarts, so uh, I'm gonna use this thing. Alrighty, it is the next day. I already got doing a little work here. Like I said, I wasn't going to, but I told you all I would, and uh, I was gonna do a lot more, but I realized that I'm kinda overdoing it here. This deck's pretty it's in pretty rough shape and this is my first time welding and I kind of felt like I needed to make my welds look nicer but they just are what they are I, I'm not like super versed in welding I wish I could have done a better job but uh, the rods small the rods the wrong type and I don't know how to stick weld so uh, I guess it's a learning experience but I ground that down made it a little cleaner got some of the spatter off and then I ground this down here on the inside and the outside Y'all let me know what you think. Um, I did clean the deck, as you can see. You can't see it all. Um, so, uh, I don't think I'm gonna weld that hole shut because if water gets in there, it could get trapped and stay in there for a really long time and definitely rust the deck out. So, down the road, maybe I'll fix that when I'm a better welder and can like ensure an airtight hole or maybe I could just actually weld that hole up but uh, I don't want to mess with that for right now. So I got that idler off last night. Me and my dad worked on it. It's right here. It's shot. Um, it's toast. Uh, I had to put a little hole right here in the shield. Uh, and I sprayed a whole bunch of lithium grease in there. 
and then sprayed it with carb cleaner and spun it with the air hose and the vise. I used some spacers to clamp it. Uh, it's dangerous, don't really, wouldn't recommend doing it, but um, that's how I did it. We got it unstuck, just kind of working it back and forth. Bearing shot, pulley shot, but I don't care. Both of these pulleys are shot. The only thing that's really good on these is the spindles. Um, so down the road, off buy new ones of these, but I want to get this deck together and use it. Uh, I got it in the vise and opened it way up. Uh, you can see where I'd beat on it and open it. Uh, and I think that's part of the reason this belt is burned really bad is because it's not been engaging and has been burning the belt severely. So I think that needs to go back a little bit more because I believe if you hold the clutch down, it will actually, nope, that's it. You can actually hear it hit that thing and that takes forever to tighten up. And I don't think, I think this belt stretched and I don't think it's really super tight. It's not really that tight. It's pretty, pretty loose. I mean, I'm not pressing very hard on that. Like, um, I know you don't want the belt super like gnarly tight, but that's too loose. Uh, so I'm gonna have to fix that as well. I'll just loosen those two nuts up, push it back a little bit, put it back together and uh, put the deck on it. And then, so uh, I'm gonna put everything back together and then we will get to test this thing. Obviously the deck is gonna make a lot of noise, but it, it is what it is. It's not like it's a huge deal. Okay, got a new battery in the camera. Let's see how this thing starts. First start of the day. This thing just let out a massive backfire. Alrighty everybody, let's try that again. I was gonna put it on the smaller pulley, but I don't think it actually works. Oh, I found out there's an adjustment on the front. It is belt tension. Uh, so, uh, I was gonna put it on the smaller pulley, but it won't uh, work right. The, the tensioner is all the way like out. I don't know if this thing's supposed to shoot grass. It's shooting it like over there from here. Um, and I need to keep a close eye on that belt for jumping again. Let's see if this thing will start and not backfire. Okay. I don't know why I did that. It, it's the first time it's ever done that.
because this belt's screwed up, it's like just about jumping out. There's the tensioner for it. Right down the rest, boy. Yeah, that's annoying. You know what else I think it is? That belt's super worn out. I just realized it's probably super stretched. And uh, this is just like way maxed out. Alrighty, everybody, it has been weeks since I've recorded on these two projects right here, the Toro Wheel Horse Classic and the Craftsman Rear Discharge Mower. Uh, I just haven't filmed, or I've been filming uh, for another video and I've been in limbo waiting for parts. Um, just a lot going on right now. I have another project that I got. You all are going to want to see that because we're moving into some more heavier, bigger equipment. We're moving into more of what I actually want to record on the channel, which is more farming style um, content. Um, I'm not saying the mowers are going to be going anywhere, but hopefully they'll be getting less and there'll be more day-to-day -day me content. Um, nonetheless, uh, I figured I would show you all this. It's for a, another mower that I filmed a video on. I got four free mowers, um, sold one of them, selling another one. Uh, and that one, I thought the motor was blown up, but it is not blown up. I took the crankcase, I separated it, and the bearings all seem to be fine. I gotta check one bearing, which is the top bearing where the flywheel is. But uh, I filmed a video for that, and it just didn't turn out good at all. So um, I'm not gonna end up uh, uploading that, but I wanted to show you all, it's pretty cool. This is the, I got this off eBay. Um, this is the uh, packaging that the crankcase uh, gasket came in it's pretty uh pretty cool crankcase gasket it's like original made in the usa briggs and stratton stuff um not affiliated with ebay but if you ever want to get oem original gasket stuff or original anything ebay is the place to go because you got you know phil and robertson indiana selling something that's been in a shed for 30 years and while that could be a bad thing it could also be a good thing, you know what I mean. You, you can get some actual OEM stuff at really good prices, actually. Not affiliated with eBay at all, but I use them uh, basically for everything I buy. Um, you just got to know how to use the platform. It's a little less user-friendly than Amazon. You actually have to, like, click buttons and, like, decide what you want. Nonetheless, I figured I'd show you all that. Um, pretty cool stuff. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to say that the reason I haven't been filming this, it's been probably three weeks since I filmed this, maybe going on a month since I've filmed either of these. Um, I have been using that, the tire went flat on it. Uh, it smoked the belt, which is right here. Um, if you're wondering, this Toro is a 37 inch deck. This is kind of hard to find. I don't have the part number. Um, the belt on it, I believe is 140 inch by half inch belt. This was the original belt, which I'm assuming is a hundred and, well now it's probably like 145 inch. Uh, but this was a 3 8 belt and it was jumping the pulleys and just trashed. So uh, I replaced that with a half inch belt, which is a lot more of a beast. Um, as you can see right there, uh, these pulleys down here might be misaligned. It's kind of shaving the Kevlar off like a lot. Um, but I have been mowing with this mower and using it. Uh, it's pretty legit. The only thing I'm having an issue with, and if wheel horse guys watch this, Toro wheel horse or actual wheel horse, um, the deck is when I am mowing in a deep field, like in the back, on the back field, when the deck catches, it flips up and is hitting. It, it's 
flipping up. And I don't know why. That explains why the deck was so messed up on the front. You guys have seen all that already. It's been weeks since I repaired that deck. I've mowed with it two or three times. Um, but when I hit something, it's going like that. And flipping and pushing the back up and it's hitting. And uh, The motor's doing real good, actually. Um, it, it has some harder time with wet grass, but being a 37-inch deck and having the deck line up with the tires is really nice, whereas you can see on the Craftsman, it sticks out so when you're going around fence posts you have to like turn around the fence post this thing you can basically go right by it um they get a lot bigger than that but um next we're going to be working on this um as you recall the as i recall this motor seized was ran out of oil something whatever don't care um it's a 12 horse tecumseh uh when i got these it came with a donor motor here which is a 12 and a half horse Tecumseh. It's painted silver, which makes me wonder if this was either repainted or if this came out of a um, anniversary edition lawnmower. Because if you don't know, uh, I believe Craftsman's anniversary edition stuff. I believe that's right. Is it Craftsman? Yeah, I think it's Craftsman. Um, their anniversary stuff is silver, I do believe. Um, so I don't know. Uh, it's not like, I don't know if that's counts i'm not sure i know that they have push mowers that are like an anniversary edition um but this is it it has a new overhead head on it ohv overhead valve head uh you can tell that either the indians or the chinese that cast this use styrofoam as the receiving mold um, because the aluminum is styrofoam uh, so what happens is when they do this in a foundry, they make this part out of styrofoam, encase it in sand, and when they pour the molten aluminum in, it melts the styrofoam away or whatever foam they're using uh, and replaces that foam with um, the casting material. Uh, so as you can tell, high quality casting, Briggs & Stratton original, styrofoam used, who knows where that was made. Uh, it works, I uh, took the valve cover off, everything looks like brand new in there. Uh, this exhaust is toast. It's gonna have to go. It blew it out. I don't know why. Um, it it smoked it. Uh, I did wash this thing off. Um, we got to clean the carburetor, which I took it apart. It is very very dirty. Um, you can see the bowl there is very nasty, or the the float bowl. Uh, so that'll just be a little bit of carb cleaner and. That'll get all cleaned up. I don't know when those videos are gonna be coming out. I'm trying to think if I should like give, give it away. It has big tires, big rear tires. I'll give you that. And the other thing I got um, is very old. One of them is from, I'll give you the years. One of them is from 1949 and the other one is actually quite rare piece of uh, equipment. Um, it is not powered on itself it has to be it's ground it's ground driven um and it is probably it's quite a actually a rare piece somehow i'm getting all this rare stuff um it's this old i believe the model that it supersedes is horse drawn so it's probably like early 1900s 1920 1930s um but You'll be seeing videos on all of that. Um, I have been filming y'all. Uh, there we go. Wow, this is paper thin. How does this go on here? It goes like this, I'm gonna assume. I'm gonna be careful not to rip this, y'all. This may get some uh, gasket maker on it, some RTV. That's really thin housing here. As you can see, I clean this. Um, and then I'll stick it together. Alrighty, everybody. It is the next day. Got this thing put back together, washed off. Everything seems to be good to go. Got the carburetor back together. The carburetor was really bad. It was very, very bad. Uh, it was like soaking carb cleaner. Blow it out. Use, uh, um, welding tip cleaners my brain's not working but i got everything good it may hit here because this thing got bent 
and I don't want to take the nut off because it's the nut to the flywheel. Sorry if you hear the air compressor in the background. I'm going to get this thing pulled out, get the Tecumseh out of that, put this Tecumseh in, four bolts, uh, deck pulley, drive pulley, charging wire, starter wire, fuel pump, fuel hose and throttle cable should be relatively, and I think kill switch as well. So, get out. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, the amount of oil is just horrendous. Go on your back. Holy smokes, man. Let me get this piece of cardboard out of here. Um, I'm going to waste no time here. I'm going to... Oh, the, uh, the seal actually... The seal's just... Wow. Okay, that's um, an interesting deal there. Someone obviously must have not installed it right or something, I don't know. Boy, the crank on this is like brand new. Okay, enough talking. I'm gonna get this thing off here. It's got some keeper tabs on it. Um, got a block of wood anywhere here. So far this is going Swimmingly. Okay. Yeah, that's not what I wanted to do at all. Uh, okay. Huh. It's an exhaust port. Would you look at that? Anyway, so that's the old junk motor. Um, the Allens on this one did not want to come out, so what I did was heated them. Put the Allen key in there and lightly tapped on the end of the Allen key, like a manual type impact. And that came out with a couple taps. Um, I cleaned this up. This thing was packed full of grease down inside there. There's still some down in there, but I can't get it out, so. Um, I can barely reach down in here. Uh, so yeah, this thing is dirty. So what I'm gonna do next is clean this up. I'm gonna wipe it up by hand because I don't want all this getting on the ground and I can just burn the paper towels and um, yeah they'll just burn up and all that will burn up so I did go ahead and take that off as well um, which was just two cotter pins which I actually don't know what I did with the cotter pins. Oh, right there and uh, the front of the deck is loose. I don't know about the back it looks like there's one there and maybe one on the other side and that comes out but I'm gonna clean this up and I will get back to y'all. Alrighty y'all, so we got the deck off. Kind of a pain to get off. Not super bad, but definitely different. You got one on this side. Uh, another one on the other side. You got obviously the upfront stuff that I talked about. And I believe you have three or two clips in the middle. And then you have to detach your rear chute. And that's also a cotter pin. Everything's cotter pins except for uh, uh, these guys. These are so much better. If you have these, ladies and gentlemen, use these. Do not use uh, the bendable ones, one-time use. They're really one-time use, but... Okay. Um, I believe somebody has the blades on this backwards. As a matter of fact, I know they do. I don't know what is up with me and the blades backwards. The blade on that was upside down. That is the Toro that I didn't, or I filmed a video, but I didn't upload it. Um, the blade was backwards on that. Another mower, I got the blade, or they were upside down. Uh, and this thing, the blade's upside down. Um, I don't know how people cannot figure out that the grass goes out the chute. Um, you don't cut with this edge. As you can see, this is the edge that creates wind. This is your cutting edge. This is the wind edge that creates the updraft and carries it out. 
this way this works. Blade cuts the grass, grass comes around, comes out. You have a side shoot, the grass all, almost always, I don't know if I've ever seen one, the grass gets cut, carried up the front of the deck and out either side. So in that case, this would be right. If it was a side shoot, this would be correct, this one wouldn't be. But this is definitely timed, by the way. These will hit each other severely if you didn't time it right. But the way this spins is it feeds, 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 feeds. It feeds, as you can see, this needs to go over here and this needs to go over here i believe because if you take this one off the cutting blade will be facing the opposite of that cutting blade left side cutting blade right side of the blade so i'm going to swap these over um this thing does have kind of like a carrying handle um it's different it's a heavy deck um so if anybody who knows whoever will wa ever watch this here's your uh, belt routing um guide so this is your timed cross belt here this is going to be the belt that's underneath this uh, and then this is going to be your drive belt to your motor um, but everything's timed correctly i believe uh, maybe a little off, but um, put the engine back in, and I'll catch y'all when we're ready to fire this thing up. Cleaned it out. Got a little bit on the ground. I'll wipe it up, um, but not too bad. Um, can't think of anything else. Keyword should. Look at that, it even matches. Like it was meant to be. Of course that's hitting. Dang it. That's so dumb. No. Okay, I gotta take this, um, I get to take this oil drain off. That's a, uh, that's a thingy. It's a piece of, steel pipe with a turn down while the other one is not a piece of steel pipe with a turn down. Alrighty, apparently I wasn't recording somehow, I just added some oil. I don't know how much oil this thing has in it, so I'm going to let it sit for a little bit. And uh, we'll see. Honestly don't know. Looks like I filled it right up there. I'm not quite sure on that. Oh, man. Well, y'all, I have no clue how this is going to go. Um, I don't know if I got gas to it or not. Supposedly it's got oil uh, after letting it sit here for probably 10 minutes. I don't know. There's deck engagement. Does the deck actually engage? I should make sure of that. Ooh, it's loose. It is not very tight. If you're still watching at this point, who knows if you are, drop a like on the video. Helps me out a ton. I know all of, all of us, us YouTubers say it. All the people on YouTube say it. It's because, well, it does actually help a lot. And commenting helps a lot, lot. And uh, if you want to become a loyal member to the channel, you can subscribe. I don't do channel memberships because YouTube takes a lot. If y'all wanted me to do YouTube channel memberships, I could. I don't know. Um, but for right now, I'm just keeping it simple. So, yeah. Holy smoke. Oh, wow. Okay.
can already tell you we're not getting fuel because this lovely carburetor that's just so Let me tell you something, ladies and gents, if there's any ladies that watch this. This has been the hardest carburetor I've ever worked on. It barely runs on full choke. I've blown it out three times, and this last time, I used a ton of carb cleaner on it. Like, I made sure I blew that thing out. This thing better run. If it doesn't run, it's governor related. I don't believe it's electrical because it runs on full choke. I don't know. I genuinely uh, has 90, uh, 90 uh, PSI of uh, uh, the compressions. Um, compression is 90 PSI. I don't know. This is the carburetor from the other unit. This is different. And they're pinched on, so you can't get them off. This requires a pull rather than a push. I could technically make it work, honestly. I could stick it on there and stick a wire to it and, um, you know, be super jank. But um, I'd prefer not to do that. Alrighty everyone, this is with the other carburetor. Shocking. Break. Shocking. Breaking news. That carburetor sucks. Fantastic. And it's what I had suspected earlier. You know, that spring is like uh, maybe a little too strong. Mm. Oh yeah, uh-huh, yeah, it's way too strong. Um, also, I was able to get the uh, air cleaner off of the other one. Here's the air cleaner that was on the original motor. Original, original being the one in there now. Here's the air cleaner that was on the original motor. So, and it came with the sock. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all this on. And we're finally, oh my goodness, it's actually happening. We get to test this thing out and see what it's like having a rear discharge timed deck. Huh? Never in my life, ever. Man, the spring scares me. It's too, too violent. Got too much go juice to it here. Let me turn it down. Okay, let's see what that does.
have no clue what I'm doing. how long it's been. Oh wow, we're actually moving. What is this? Oh, what? What is that? How does that work? That's so cool. That is super weird. Shift on the fly, it's almost... I don't know, that's really weird. Oh, this thing is like sitting in like... I feel like I could go 50 in this. Oh man, okay, okay, we're going a little fast there. Oh wow, we're going way too fast, brother. Something. Abort mission. What's going on under here? Oh, burning belt. What's going on? What? Why is it what it is? What's the issue here? Huh. Let's get on it and try to get going again. Needs a little more RPM. Here's the deal. This sweet shift on the fly thing just causes the belt to slip. Horrible design.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, an interesting idea, poorly executed. Um, this thing, this shift on the fly deal, I look like a mess. Whose idea was it to make the shift on the fly belt slip? It burns the belt up. <laughs> I don't know if you're supposed to use it like every once in a while. I mean, low in this thing is fast. It is not enough for that engine cannot keep up with that speed. Um, wow. I mean, I don't know. Y'all let me know what you think. Having the grass exit out the rear is kind of weird. Because normally you're used to like that, not that. Um, okay, well, it uh, is mediocre at best. So, I think, oh, on that note, y'all, I'm gonna end this video. Don't really think I have much else to record. <laughs> I'm tired and I have a lot of footage to edit. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video. Probably a little bit of a long one, but nonetheless, I'm recording stuff and trying to get it done. Um, yeah, interesting idea. Not great execution on the old shift rooney um, Shift on the fly. Uh, but my arm's getting tired, so hope the Lord's watching over all you out there. Uh, and uh, yeah, watching over me. And uh, thank you all for watching. You're all a huge blessing to me. And uh, I'll catch you all in the next one. God bless. Alrighty y'all, got a uh, Bible verse for the end of the video here. Don't mind the Blue Jay in the background. Psalm 136, one through three, say this out of the ESV version. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. And we'll do verse four. To him who alone does great wonders for his steadfast love endures forever. It goes on and on and on about how the Lord's love endures forever. Anyways, catch y'all in the next one. God bless.